Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all about the brand new Waves Super Rack Performer and how you can use this with your Behringer Wing with one cable. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, Waves Super Rack Performer is a plug-in processing program that allows us to take all of our channels from the Behringer Wing, put them into Super Rack Performer, process them with Waves plugins, put them back into our console, and be able to mix with a full set of Waves plugins all on your computer. Now, Super Rack used to be part of the SoundGrid network, which it still is, and you can still use SoundGrid with Super Rack. But the problem with SoundGrid is that it had additional hardware that you would have to purchase. You would have to get a card, you would also have to get a SoundGrid server, and all of those things would add up in price. But Super Rack Performer does all of the processing natively on your computer and uses the horsepower of your computer for all of the audio processing. Now, the downside of that with native is that there's a little bit of added latency. And I'll have a different video on the latency inside of Super Rack Performer. But if you, latency is important for you, then you would need to go to SoundGrid. But currently, as of the date of this video, there is not a Waves expansion card for the Behringer Wing. So if you want to use Waves with the Behringer Wing, this is the way to do it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in and see how to actually get this thing working. So I have on my computer over here, Waves Super Rack. And when you start up the first time, you'll need to go to setup right here. And then you'll need to go and connect your Behringer Wing with a USB cable into the USB slot on the back of the console. And that is part of the control audio network. So you'll just take that USB cable, plug it into the back of the wing, and then plug it into your computer. Once you have that done, you can go to device and select wing. And so that will tell Super Act Performer to use the wing as the audio device. The next thing that we can see here is that our sample rate is 48 kilohertz, and that is set on the console. The Behringer Wing is either 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, and we can get to that by going to our setup and going to our audio tab, and it's right here, clock rate, 48 or 44.1. Now the buffer size is how fast the audio will process through your computer and back to the wing. The lower this buffer number is, the faster it will be. The bigger the number is, the longer the latency is going to be, or the longer it's gonna take the audio to process through. Now the benefit of a larger number or a bigger buffer is that it's going to task the computer a little bit less. So if you have a very fast computer, I would recommend setting your buffer size in the 64 or 32. If you have a slower computer, I would recommend setting it at 256, maybe 128 if your computer can handle it. The the more processing that you do on plugins, the more task the processor inside of the computer is going to have to do. For this case, I'm going to set this to 256 just because I'm also recording my screen. Once I've done that, I can then go to my overview. Now, if this is the first time you're using Super Rack Performer on your computer, you will need to grant access to the microphone for this to process the audio through it. If you accidentally clicked no, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go up to your Apple, Go to System Preferences, then go to Security and Privacy, go over to Privacy, find your microphone, and unlock and make sure that Super Rack Performer is clicked. Once you've done that, you can then go back to Super Rack Performer, and this is ready to process audio. Now I have a microphone here on channel one. Check, 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 here, here we go. So we can hear that. And if we go to my patching, we can see that this is coming in on local one. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to route my local one to going to Super Rack Performer on the USB audio. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm then going to take my alternate input and route that to be from Super Rack Performer back into the console. Now, the benefit of doing this is I can set my channel gain on the main and then simply switch over to alternate when I'm ready to use Super Rack. So on main, I'm going to click here and select my source where this microphone is plugged into, and that's on local in one. And as we can see, I've already set the gain up top 
top here, check, 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 and I have a full nominal signal. So this is a very healthy volume on this channel. And so what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go over to my alternate, and I'm going to press card one, where this is selected, and I'm actually going to go and select USB audio, and I'm going to select USB one. Now, if you've gone to this page and you only notice that there's two selections that you can pull from, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to setup, and then over on the audio tab, on the right-hand side, USB audio, and we can select between two 8, 16, 32, or 48 in and out. So I'm going to have this selected as 48 to allow me to process all 48 channels going into Super Rack Performer. The next thing I'm going to do is going to go, to back, go back to my channel here, and we can see that I'm still on USB 1, and my local one is there. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to press routing, and I'm going to go to my output group and make sure that this is on USB audio. So we have selected there. And we're going to unlock and press auto plus one. And now at this point, I'm going to select all of my inputs for my channels here. And so in this case, I'm going to select my output one to be from local one. If I have my inputs coming in on AES 50, I'll need to go to my AES 50 and select them from there. In this case, I'm just using my local one for this microphone. So we can see that as I'm talking to this microphone, we're also outputting here. Check, check, check. And so the very next thing that we need to do now is to go back over to Super Rack Performer and pull in where this microphone is coming in from. So over on Super Rack Performer, we can see that I have Rack 1 here, and I'm going to press Input. Select Mono, because this is a mono channel, and I would go to Input 1. And that is then going to automatically route the output to being on Output 1. So if we go back to my channel, we can see that this is on main. So this is the direct microphone that I'm talking into, into this channel. But over on Super Act Performer, we can also see that I have a healthy signal here. So we can go in and take a look at my signal chain. So I have my F6, which is one of my favorite things to have at the beginning of my vocal chain. This is just doing a little bit of vocal cleanup. So it's removing a little bit of proximity effect that's happening. I have a low end roll off here. And then I have a C6, which is a multiband compressor. I then have an 1176, which is a CLA-76, and then I have a RDSer, which is a great DSing plugin. I then can then go back to my overview, and I can see this, and continue on to do the rest of my channels. Now, if I'm wanting to switch over to being from Super Rack now, I've already set my preamp gain, and I'm happy with it, what I can then do is I can then just press Alt. And so now my processing is going from my channel of the microphone, going into Super Rack Performer, coming out of Super Rack Performer into my computer here. Now the benefit of doing this on the alt is I still have the ability of adjusting the gain of this input. And then I can select between either direct without waves or alt with waves. Now the benefit of using main and alt here is that if I'm on waves, I can still see my preamp gain and adjust my preamp gain as needed. Now additionally, I can also set up a quick button to swap between my main input and my alternate input for all of the channels globally. And I can do that if my input select is set to auto. Now the benefit of that is now I can go over to my user custom controls, I can press user, I can then press view, and I'm going to page up to two. And I'm gonna define this button right here as my main alt swap. So I have that button selected. I'm going to go to other and then global main alt. And now we can see that if I go back to my channel, it's currently set on user and I can press this button and it will switch to alt. But one thing to note here is that if the input select is set to manual, it will always stay on whatever it is set on here. We can see that all of my channels are swapping except for my channel one. And now we can see that if that's set to auto, it's patching all of them. Now in some future videos, I'm gonna be showing you my favorite plugin chains, my favorite plugins, and how to use them and how to implement them in your mix on both the Behringer X32 and the Behringer Wing. 
Now, if you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com for more articles, tips, and tricks, as well as my brand new X32 Fundamentals course, where I teach you the five main fundamentals that I believe that you need to know to be able to run audio and how that implies with the Behringer X32. Now, if you have any questions or if you have some videos that you're hoping that I will make on maybe some Waves plugins or other consoles out there, please drop that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. Have a great day.